All right, guys, let's talk about transactions in Web 3.0. Now, in Web 3.0, everything is a transaction. Does not matter if some information is flowing between two peers or money is flowing between two peers uh, in terms of or in the shape of, two, of coins. So it doesn't matter what's flowing between uh, two peers. It's always termed as a transaction. Now, uh, to understand Web 3.0 transactions in better details, let's first look at how Web 2.0 transactions take place. Now in Web 2.0, there's always a centralized authority that's giving the legitimacy to a transaction. In the sense, let's take the example of a uh, person called Akshay and he goes to a restaurant, okay, in the Web 2.0 world, okay, he goes to a restaurant, he eats there, the restaurant gives him a bill and Akshay presents his card to pay the bill. Now the restaurant doesn't know or trust Akshay in the sense, the restaurant is probably seeing this person for the first time and they don't know or trust Akshay or they don't even trust if Akshay has any money, he's just giving a card, right? The card has no uh, value in the sense that it could be empty or how does restaurant know that Akshay has money? Now, a uh, restaurant then swipes the card and that swiping of the card is actually sending a request to the bank. Okay, the bank is the person uh, or the entity that says that, okay, Akshay has money because Akshay's money is residing with us. He has a bank account. He has these many dollars or, and, and the amount, the bill amount is $100 and he definitely has that much money. So the bank returns true and says that, yes, the money is present. Okay, so you cannot have this transaction happening without the bank being present. Now, imagine if the bank server goes down or if the bank uh, blocks Akshay out due to some political reason, right? Then suddenly Akshay now does not have uh, any legitimacy. He, he can't use his money in the real world. Suddenly the bank has logged him out, the bank account has closed down, or the bank server has failed for that particular transaction. Even then, uh, there's a single point of failure. The whole centralization problem is here because, uh, you know, you can't have decentralized, distributed, uh, you know, way of functioning out here. Everything depends on the bank. And this is just one example, right? So it could be in hospitals, could be in government uh, documents, could be in, uh, in booking cabs, whatever. Uh, I'm just showing you the example of a bank out here. So whenever the bank returns true, that's get, saying that yes, Akshay has the money that he owes the restaurant right now, only then the money is then sent from Akshay's account to the restaurant's account. That's how the money, um, the transaction takes place. Now, obviously, like I said, the there are a lot of cons, a lot of problems with this, right? The big bank now starts having a lot of power over Akshay. And now a bank also has to answer to the government. The government is now the centralized uh, you know, entity. And on top of the government, there's IMF the, or the international fund, the international banks and all of those basically, which um, set a value for between the dollars and the, the different currencies and, uh, you know, give even more legitimacy to the currency that's getting exchanged out here. So everything is centralized and there's a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer which everybody's, you know, uh, answering to somebody out here. But what if there was a better way? What if there was a better uh, way to live in the future? Right. And that's where Web 3.0 transactions come in. Here, what happens is that Akshay goes to the restaurant and there can be direct transaction between the peers and you don't need to have a centralized body involved. The only thing is uh, Akshay and restaurant are both connected to the chain and the chain is then uh, guided by a smart contract in the way, uh, in the sense that you know that's what guides how the transaction between them should take place. We'll talk about smart contracts in another video, which is just coming up after this video, like tomorrow. I'll please, uh, I'll launch the smart contract video, but the smart contract decides how they can transact between themselves, and that's what is the governing uh, the transaction between them. So there's no centralized authority body, people sitting there to check the transactions, but a smart contract, a piece of program that's actually get, giving the legitimacy to the transaction. So they can, so Akshay has a wallet, restaurant has a wallet, and they can directly transfer money to each other without the request being sent to the bank, then the server saying, yes, he has the money, and then the money being transferred from this bank account to another bank account, which are two different banks. They're all, you know, under the main uh, bank of that particular government of that particular country, and then, you know, uh, all of that's the whole financial system is going on. You don't need that in the Web 3.0 world, Web 3.0 transactions. So this means that it's completely decentralized because, uh, you know, because everybody has their own wallets. It's completely decentralized. You don't have to, uh, you know, wait for somebody to answer it. And uh, the bank cannot lock Akshay out. He cannot just, the bank cannot say that to, from today, Akshay doesn't have an account or he does, his account does not exist or he cannot have any transactions or he's blocked. He can't, the, the bank can't do that because there is no bank, right? So Akshay will always have his wallet. Now he can store his wallet on different, uh, in different places where it just, you know, his cryptocurrencies remain more secure. 
that, that's a problem that we'll discuss in another video. Okay, there are ways, now there are ways to keep your cryptocurrencies very, very secure. Uh, so Akshay is not dependent on a bank and even if, uh, you know, he becomes a criminal, uh, that, that's like a worst case scenario, right? He becomes criminal, his, all his assets cannot be simply just frozen away. Okay. Now I said criminal, but that's not what it was intended for. It's intended for, let's say, by, uh, like, let's say somebody like Julian Assange, right? He, he wanted to do something good for the world, but now every, all of his assets are frozen. Uh, so imagine somebody like that, a whistleblower like that, or a great hacker who, uh, you know, wants to bring transparency to the world, somebody like that they should not have their, their money or their assets frozen and that's why everybody's uh, you know shifting to the cryptocurrency world so i hope you've learned uh, how web 3.0 and 3.0 transactions differ and what web 3.0 brings in now i'm preparing you uh, with all of this information because obviously i'm teaching solidity on the side which is like a programming language to learn how to build web 3.0 applications so i'm just sharing with you all of this knowledge so that you have more context when when you learn the programming all right so thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video